polluter. It's one of the most polluting devices there are on the planet. Well, Bart, it sounds like you have a solution for how to improve that. Why don't you tell us about it? That's right. Thanks. Um, yeah, basically this Zap Scooter, it's our first product. And basically the reason we started this company was exactly what you say. It's pollution. Uh, pollution is everywhere and scooters are a big part of that. And what most people don't know actually is that scooters are up to 2,700 times as polluting as a modern car. Um, so that's really polluting and they're driving, you know, just where you're walking and where you're where you're cycling as well. Um, and also what most people don't realize is that every year twice as many scooters are being sold as cars. So it's a big part of the global pollution problem that we want to help tackle. Um, and that's the reason we started this company. So this is our first product. Um, we're gonna have more products in the two-wheeler space. Um, but this is App Scooter and App Scooter is like a yeah, it's, it's a scooter we wanted to build that we could fall in love with. It's like we wanted to build like the Tesla on two wheels. Um, yeah, and hopefully we, we've achieved that. <laughs> uh, well, it's a very nice design. And why don't you tell us about some of the you know ride features of it? Yeah, so so basically what, what we have here is a scooter with a, with a very long range. So it goes up to 240 kilometers, fits three batteries modules. Um, it has a touchscreen in there. And basically we put that in there to make it safer because uh, another thing that's nice to know, or well, it's actually not that nice, is that the single biggest cause of that worldwide right now at the moment is, is smartphone usage while driving. Um, and that's a big issue because most people, um, yeah, they don't want to die when they're driving. Um, and we kind of want to prevent that as well because we want to be you know, safe. Um, so what we looked at is how can you make that smart, how can you make that safe again? Um, because people, they, they need those functionalities. Uh, these days you cannot go without your smartphone for you know, more than a couple of hours. Um, and they, there, there's been all kinds of things that they tried, like all kinds of bans and, and, and fines to, to ban smartphone uses, but they have not worked so far. So we believe the, the challenge is in innovation and, and proper regulations to, to, to get this in a safe way. Uh, and so what we did is we looked at how to do that. And basically what we did is we simply built in the screen into the scooter and connect it simply with Bluetooth to your smartphone. So it doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, an Android device, or even a Windows phone, you just connect it with Bluetooth, you can stream Spotify, you can connect, control your phone with the buttons on your handlebar. Oh. Uh, so you can always have your hands on the, on, on the, on the steer. Um, yeah, so you always have two hands to brake, but you can also control your phone with it. So if somebody is calling, uh, you can pick up your phone by simply pressing a button on the handlebar, uh, you can have your Bluetooth headset in if you want. You can the sound can come out of the scooter if you want. Okay. So it has speakers. Um, yeah, so it's really nice. And uh, and, and being awesome. an electric, uh, that you can actually hear it from the speakers, right? You can actually hear it from the speakers. Yes, yes. So uh, it's fully electric, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can hear it then. And so uh, the applications for this has a heck of a long range, 150 miles, I think you said. So yeah. where do you see the application? Um, yeah, basically, first off, we want to build something for consumers because we believe that's right now where the biggest market uh, is and where there's the biggest problem uh, because it's it's the biggest market in the, and you need to have a big impact to solve this problem. Um, yeah, so first off, we're, we're building it for consumers um, because then I think you're you're going to build the ultimate product. Um, at least that's what we've saw, seen with, with all the other tech companies. If you build something, the, there's nobody as critical as the consumer, right? Um, and we really want to build products that we can fall in love with ourselves. That, that's something we, we really stand for. Um, yeah, so that's the first thing we did. And then secondly, you can use it also in B2B. So it, out of the box, it's 100% shareable. And that's actually quite interesting. So what we did is, uh, it's all electronic locks, so you can control it and open it with your smartphone. So you don't actually need a physical lock. Um, that means if you buy our scooter, you can actually add it to our shared fleet. Um, and with that, it becomes available on the app. Um, but you don't have to do this, right? So it's, it's optional, it's only if you want to. But let's say you're, you know, you're, you're, you're leasing it for about maybe like 80 or 90 bucks per month. Um, and then you want to put it on the shared fleet and you rent it out for a couple of days. Okay. So let's say you rent it out for like 25 bucks per day. Well, if you rent it out for four days a month, you're, you're making, making, you're making, a, you're making a, you know, a profit on your scooter. Um, and, and that's actually really nice because you can just add it to the shared fleet. You don't have to do anything else. Um, and you can just rent it out to, to friends or people who are just you know, accredited to our, to our app. Um, yeah, and it actually opens up a lot of possibilities as well because you can use it for rental a lot easier. Um, the rollout for a lot of scooter sharing companies becomes a lot easier as well. And um, because of the top speed being under 25 miles an hour or whatever, you don't need to have a motorcycle license to ride it, right? 
Um, so it depends a bit on which one, which one you buy, right? So, so we have three versions. We have a two kilowatt, a four kilowatt, and seven kilowatt. And depending on the country you're living in, uh, the regulations state whether you have a, need a motorcycle license or not. Uh, in Europe, mostly you, you don't need a motorcycle license if it goes below 45 kilometers per hour, uh, and if it's less than four kilowatt. Um, in the U.S., you you might need a motorcycle license. I will have to read up on that. <laughs> yes. uh, now, one of the nice things though is you have 60 liters of storage, so you could actually store helmets in there. So the person who's renting it would have something. Yes, yes. The cool thing is you can actually store two helmets in there. You can actually store two full face helmets in in the in the trunk. So there's a lot of storage space, and it's it's three times more storage space than any other scooter in the world. Um, because like we fought, we we looked at Tesla, right? And what they did is they they, they did packaging really, really well. And packaging is just, for, for me, when I look at a product, it's like the primary thing. It starts with that. It's the architecture. It's how you combine all your parts together to make something that fulfills the needs of the customer. That's it. And how can you do that the most optimal? When, when you're looking at transport, it basically goes from A to B, right? Um, so preferably, you want A to and B to be as far as possible uh, from each other. Uh, and then you probably want to take some stuff with you. Uh, because you're going a while, you, you might want to take some, you know, your, your laptop, your sports bag, uh, maybe a beer crate. That's what we take in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, so we had a lot of customers that actually told us, yeah, we want to take a beer crate. Uh, and that kind of became our, like, our design challenge. Okay. <laughs> it was like, if we can take a beer crate, you can take pretty much anything you want. Um, so if it's a full-size sports bag, if it's two big grocery bags, um, if it's two full-face helmets, uh, and with that, you just get a lot of share, you know, added utility. Uh, because it opens up a lot of other use cases that normally wouldn't be available for a scooter. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can go further, you can take a lot more stuff with you, um, you have navigation so you can even go to places you've never been before without getting lost. Um, you can have optimized navigation so you can have like multiple, multiple points after another. Um, so that opens up a lot of use cases for like Uber, Uber Eats for example, or uh, yeah, shit, other, other uh, food delivery companies because you can have your route optimized, which saves time sure. and saves money over time. Um, yeah, so, so that, yeah, we think we've built a, a really nice first product. <laughs> so is part of your service then on the, when you get to the sharing part, is, are, are you, do you become kind of a, a sharing uh, company, if you will, or a facilitator? So, so first and foremost, we're an OEM, right? So we're, we're, we're focused primarily on building really nice products that, yeah, we can fall in love with. That's really what we want to do. Uh, so we're, we're not aiming to become a scooter sharing company. However, we are aiming to provide the hardware uh, and the software layer to be able to do that, right? So uh, again, it's out of the box shareable and, and you can you know, get our white label app to start your own scooter sharing company. We make it a lot easier for people to start their own sure. scooter sharing business. Yeah, basically, you're providing the platform. Yes, so basically if you want to start a rental or you want to start a scooter sharing company, it doesn't matter. You just get our white label app uh, you lease a few scooters, uh, scooters from our company, and you just start small, and you add a few uh, once it's going well. And now uh, your company's been around for about th three, uh, three and a half years. Now, you, yeah, what, yeah. Why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about that story? Yeah. So uh, yeah, we started with just two guys in uh, in Delft, which is a small, really small city in the Netherlands, um, and it's it's a really good place to start because um, what most people don't know about Delft is that it has one of the best technical universities in the Netherlands, actually in the in the world. And they have something it's called the Dream Hall, uh, and the Dream Hall is a very interesting concept there because there's, I think, 14 dream teams, and it, the dream teams are all whiz kids from the universities sitting together in teams building solar cars, building, um, you know, solar boats, uh, motorcycles, and you know anything that's electric with with wheels or that goes on water. They're building it, uh, and the good thing is they're they're basically almost winning any of the competitions in the world. So they're winning the solar challenge every year. Um, I think only one year that they haven't won it in Australia. And uh, they're winning like the uh, Formula Students competition, which is basically a, a four-wheel drive electric vehicle, uh, Formula, Formula One racing car <laughs> uh, that goes from zero to 100 in like less than two seconds. Wow. Uh, yeah, and, and they've won that, I think, seven, seven times now. Um, so there's, there's a hot spot of really good, talented people. And we hired all the people there because we wanted to build you know, a really cool product with rocket and race car engineers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we did, yeah. So, um, and then we, we kind of did some online market validation. So we started doing some pre-orders online uh, to see whether people would want to buy, you know, something from a startup online that would be an electric scooter that we envisioned a little bit. Um, so that worked, we got some validation. 
Uh, first funding rounds, uh, online crowdfunding, we raised 1.1 million, got our first engineers, uh, built the actual prototypes, um, did a lot more engineering, more fundraising. Um, we did like, in total, like four online rounds now. Okay. Yeah, no, no three. Yeah, we're gonna do another online round in January. Uh, and we just closed 10 million. Um, yeah, like, I think three weeks ago. So that's really nice. And that allows us actually to, uh, now we have enough to get to production which has been uh, our struggle to get there. <laughs> Always is, yeah. We're really happy we have that now because that will allow us to actually become an actual company, right? Right now it's been starting up and, yeah. and now we have enough to get to production. So then we can actually get to our commitment that we made to our customers and actually start delivering products um, because it's, it's been a while and we really want to get the products out there. Um, yeah, so I think that's the main challenge that we, we faced in the last couple of years is, is, is just, it's, it's really big hardware. So it takes a lot of funds to just get to market, to just get your prototypes out there. Um, you need an insane amount of people to, to get there. Uh, right now we're almost 60 people. Wow. Um, yeah, and before we get to market, we'll probably be about 150. Um, yeah. And you're contracting with the manufacturer, you said, right? Yes, so we're not doing assembly ourselves. We really want to focus on building great products that we like. Um, and we don't have the resources as Tesla does. Uh, we're not going to do production ourselves. We don't want production help. Uh, we, we are partnering with, uh, with people who have a lot of experience in building automotive certified products. Um, yeah, and we're using their expertise to help us build. You know, so when do you see them rolling out, out of the factory line? Uh, that's going to be second half of this year. It's going to start uh, be the start of production. Um, yeah, so the first deliveries are all these sold, sold out. Uh, they are going to be in the Netherlands and Germany. Um, and then, you know, on a monthly basis, we're going to add countries to that. Um, so other countries that are open for pre-orders right now are uh, France, Italy, um, the UK, um, and Spain, I believe. Yeah. And if you go to our website, eTurgo.com, uh, you can, you know, see if you're already, your country is already available for pre-order. Um, yeah, yeah, because we didn't believe in opening pre-orders everywhere at once. Uh, because we didn't really feel, feel that was fair uh, and we didn't know if we were able to deliver on that um, yeah because it takes a lot of you know investments to be able to deliver to a certain market um, so that's why we're here uh, starting off small we're looking to see if uh, the US is a very interesting market for us we really want to come here uh, and we're looking to see if the interest is here if it is then we're gonna come here uh, yes, for sure. Well, excellent, because I could sure use one to pedal around uh, CES here. So next year, I'm hoping <laughs> I can uh, rent one of these with my smartphone. So Bart, thank you very much for your time.